And next we have uh, Eric. Eric Adamson. Yep. Thanks, Alexander. Uh, I'm just going to try to share a screen here. And similarly uh, to Dan, we have some uh, pretty rough production value video to share. But uh, I guess in agriculture, it's really just about does the, does the does the robot do the job and less about is it flashy? So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tortuga AgTech. Our mission is to build a healthier society and a thriving planet through smarter farming, which I don't think in this group uh, necessarily differentiates us uh, very much. We're all in this uh, industry because of its importance to society and to the world. Um, here is uh, a quick video, um, and I'm going to try to find this optimize for sharing uh, button. Anyway, a lot of this is uh, on our website, but essentially we're building similarly a fleet of robots that pick uh, strawberries in these uh, tabletop settings, which is to say glass houses like this that you see uh, from an overhead view, but also tunnel environments. So um, here's again, some cell phone video from one of our ops people in the field. Um, a lot of this video is pretty dated at this point, but uh, nonetheless, uh, there it is. So um, we are building a robot that uh, just like Dan mentioned, you know, different set of crops entirely, but can drive itself down the row, can identify uh, fruit that is ready to be picked, can also identify fruit that's not ready to be picked. Um, and where is that fruit in its life cycle and what information can we give to farmers? So I think, you know, uh, the two main problems that a farmer faces other than the environment they're in and the climate that they're in are uh, a labor constraint and an information constraint. So uh, we started this company thinking if you can solve some of the labor problems by performing critical farm services, uh, and in doing so, capture information that the grower has never had that deconstrains two of their major problems and can significantly change how a farm can operate. Um, I think if there's any last point that I would mention, it's there is simply no substitute in agriculture for just being in the field and learning from the actual farm environment. Uh, we spend uh, an incredible amount of our lives on farm, watching robots pick fruit, watching humans pick fruit, uh, and talking to farms about uh, farmers about what they what they have to do to keep their operations running. Um, I am in the airport right now to go for the next seven weeks to the farm, uh, and I'll be out on the farm every day, uh, pretty much for the next uh, two months. So uh, that's that's sort of the main lesson I think we've we've learned um, in our journey. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. I think I think uh, as part of this as part of the story, that I think a lot of us are probably going to tell. It's a it's a period of growth for us, so we we believe. Um, you know, we're commercializing this year. We'll be scaling up uh, through 2021 into existing um, commercial contracts we have. And um, and that's, uh, you know, 2020 has been a hell of a year, but we're still we're still on the path. So um, that's all I have. I'll take my uh, less than five minutes as well. Thanks, Eric. Um, so I'm, I'm getting some nice and specific questions from the audience. And so I, I think I'll, I'll mix it up a little bit and ask a couple of specific questions now, and then we can have a more general discussion later. Uh, so one question from the audience is, um, this is for Eric, what percentage of U.S. strawberry farms are tabletop and not ground-based? And I'll also add, like, what are the what are the differences in terms of how you approach the, the technology? Yeah, so uh, this question is uh, pointed on the U.S., right? The U.S. is actually one of the slowest adopters of more advanced uh, approaches, particularly in strawberry, um, for various amount, various numbers of reasons. But Globally, uh, probably 10 to 20% of all farms are using tabletop. And in certain markets like Europe, it's more like 70 to 90%. Um, and also the way we think about it, strawberry is kind of the perfect place to start. But if you think about the way that a strawberry plant hangs uh, out of a gutter uh, and where the strawberry hangs in free space, that looks a lot more like a lot of other crops like tomato, cucumber, bell pepper, uh, table grape, various other crops that you can try to sort of attack in similar ways that you could a, a strawberry that's hanging in a gutter kind of like this. Whereas a, um, you know, a strawberry that's grown in the soil, uh, it's actually quite a unique looking plant compared to a lot of other plants. So uh, we're not too concerned about the US um, uh, share of tabletop, although that is also growing significantly as uh, the large growers realize that, you know, the certain fumigants that we've been allowed to use that allow us to grow conventional berries in soil uh, are going away in the next handful of years. And tabletop is really the, the future um, for strawberry around the world. Thank you. And uh, that video, it was a little choppy. I was wondering if you could try and maybe share that again. Uh, it was a really nice video. Uh, and the, if you hit share screen button, the optimized screen sharing for video clip is at the bottom uh, the bottom of that window. Bottom uh, left. 
yeah, bottom left. Yeah, I think that uh, the audience would appreciate that. And I'm also getting general questions about, um, oh, it's not showing up there? No, I'm not seeing it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay, that's okay. Um, but so to that video, uh, is that is that a real time video? And uh, are there are there rates and speeds that you have to get to in order to be competitive? Yeah, I think this is the the point that Dan made. You know, what the farmer cares about is that the product costs the same or less, uh, or provides other benefits to uh, to them. So uh, I think it's it's an, an easy comparison to make. Uh, in your brain to say, well, how fast is it? Can it pick as fast as a human? Is it faster than a human? Uh, what really matters is, is it lower cost than a human? So that's a sort of a three variable problem, uh, more or less. You've got how reliable and how many hours can the robot pick? How fast can it pick? And how good is it at picking? How accurate? What is the quality? Um, so, you know, we're not as fast as a human, uh, but it doesn't need to be in order to be valuable to a grower. If it can pick far more hours, uh, more reliably and the errors that it makes are more consistent than the errors a human picker will make. So yeah, of course you have to pick fast and of course you have to pick certain um, benchmarks, but it's not really about the speed, it's about the cost. Thanks, really appreciate that. 